Looking through the crystal ball Can you picture this? And it is inside the time Ciao and welcome to Geo's Paintbrush where five minutes is all it takes to be blown away by one of the world's greatest artists. I've been asked by more than one person, what's the reason for this project, for Geo's Paintbrush? There's no question, I have a lot of other things going on right now, so why make time for something like this? Well, the answer is a fairly simple one. I believe that art is for everyone, and that in just five minutes' time, anyone can relate to and enjoy an interesting work of art. And what better vehicle for promoting this notion than the great democratic, small d, marketplace of ideas, the internet. You know, for much of human history, the greatest artists in the world created for the masses to engage with the vast majority of people who could not read or write, but who could think, and who spent countless hours in conversation with others, and who, frankly, spent a lot more time with art than we do today. Now, too often, art is relegated to a certain class, an academic or affluent or cultural elite as if the grand products of human imagination and ingenuity have no relevance to everyone else, or worse, as if everyone else lacks the interest and ability to grasp or appreciate art. I say that's just stupid, and that human history has shown us that art is for everyone, and that societies are better off when it is. One example of how brilliant art was made for the people, and really reached people, nearly everyone, as opposed to being placed in stuffy, high-priced museums or ritzy downtown galleries, was art created for placement in churches in order to provide religious and moral instruction, especially to those parishioners unable to read the Bible themselves. Today we'll consider such a work, Donatello's 15th century wood carving of Mary Magdalene, carved for the baptistry of Santa Maria del Fiore in Florence, Italy. Donatello, an early Renaissance master whose sculptures greatly influenced Michelangelo, well, this guy knew how to work a piece of wood. In his art, sculptures in wood, marble, and bronze, he brought human subjects to life, while at the same time communicating important ideas about Christianity, morality, and history. And with his emotionally expressive features, classical human forms, and unparalleled technical skill, Donatello influenced artists from his own contemporaries to those working now in the 21st century. In his day, Donatello wasn't considered an intellectual, but given how many gifted artists, writers, architects, and philosophers resided or worked in Renaissance Florence, one has to wonder what that meant. He lived a simple life, always insisting, however, on artistic freedom. And even if he wasn't the easiest guy in the world to get along with or even work with, today, more than 500 years after Donatello labored in his studio, we can still enjoy what that freedom enabled him to create. Thanks for joining us. The first thing one can't help but think upon encountering Donatello's Mary Magdalene is how homely, how worn, how skeletal, how ugly this human form appears to be. What happened to the Renaissance portrayal of the idealized human form from antiquity? There's none of that here. Why not? Surely Donatello, the master sculptor, the best sculptor in a period that can be argued to have produced more artistic genius than any other period in human history, could have given the world a Mary Magdalene whose outer beauty reflected her inner beauty, that glorified God and his creation. But instead, Donatello gives us Mary Magdalene as a homeless person, ragged, without teeth, wasting away to nothing, frail and hollow-eyed, with ratty hair. And yet, the more one examines this decrepit human form, other ideas come to mind as well. Humility, acceptance, and the sort of peace that must accompany letting go completely of material things, of all that will not last like the realization of some great truth about what really matters in the end for all of us, almost like an epiphany. Encountering this sculpture in person blows you away because it appears so lifelike, so gripping, so moving. Not realistic in appearance per se, but so real on an emotional level that the piece takes on an authenticity, an integrity that is unquestionable. Donatello is clearly seeking to demonstrate that Mary Magdalene who might have been a prostitute, but did become a follower of Jesus, 
learned through the course of her life that physical beauties and pleasures do not last, and that grace and peace and contentment, and presumably salvation, can be gained through accepting, even embracing, this simple truth. And if Mary Magdalene can achieve this grace, this peace, looking like this, well, then you can too. It's a message communicated powerfully by Donatello in this sculpture, and one that must have, upon the baptism of children in Florence, gotten people really thinking about the most important lessons to teach their children as they grow up, to reflect on the values they would seek to impart. If you're ever in Florence, definitely visit the Museo del Duomo, the Museum of Santa Maria del Fiore, across the way from the church. While it certainly doesn't attract the same attention from tourists as Brunelleschi's miraculous, stunning dome, the structure which, in a sense, launched the modern world. The museum features Donatello's Mary Magdalene, Michelangelo's Las Pietà, and Lorenzo Ghiberti's original Gates of Paradise, created for the baptistry doors. And the next time you see an expressive sculpture of a human form that causes you to linger, to stare for a few minutes, whether it's the Michael Jordan statue in front of the UC or the FDR memorial in Washington, anywhere in the world, really, Think about Donatello. Thanks for joining us.